Hello everyone. So today we are dealing with uh, histology of eyeball and eyelid. So objectives of my talk is I'll be speaking on the histology of cornea, which is present right here. I'll be speaking then on the histology of retina, which is the innermost port, which will be located right here. And then the histology of optic nerve, and finally the eyelids and the palpebra. We are aware that the eye is an organ of vision and the eye is made up of three coats. The outer one is the fibrous coat. If you see in this picture, this blue colored one is represented as a fibrous coat, which includes sclera and the cornea. You can see right again in this picture, the sclera is this and the cornea with this. The white nature of the eye, what you can see is the sclera, while the cornea is a transparent one. It is a little vascular. The next coat is the middle one, which is a vascular, and it includes a choroid, which is next to the sclera, and it is a choroid layer. Along with that, it has ciliary body, which is present right here, and iris, which is this. The iris has a dilator and sphincter pupillae. So the constrictions and dilatation of it will lead into the dilatation and the constriction of the pupil. It could be seen. So the last coat is the inner coat, or what we call it as a nervous coat. And it is contributed by the retina, which is located right here. You can compare this eyeball with a central nervous system, or you can compare it with a brain. Uh, a brain which being a nervous uh, tissue which is surrounded by a meninges, right? So they are surrounded by dura matter, arachnoid and the pia matter. If you compare those structures with the eye, the dura which is a fibrous could be compared with the sclera and the cornea. Then comes the uh, arachnoid and the pia which is a vascular could be compared with the choroid iris and the ciliary body while the nervous tissue which is present inside, that's the brain, is can be compared with the retina. So this way we can compare the eye, which is nothing but the extension of the central nervous system. Okay. Let me tell you, the eye, this, the eyeball has a cavity inside, which is divided into the anterior chamber and this posterior chamber by the lens. This anterior chamber has the aqueous humor and the posterior chamber has a vitreous body. When the light passes from this anterior one to, towards the retina, it has to cross through all the transparent layer. So it crosses this cornea, the aqueous humor, which is present in this anterior chamber. Then it crosses the lens and the vitreous body. So any opacity in this region will cause a defect in the vision. One of the commonest opacity which is noted or the pathology could be seen is in the lens and the pathology in the lens could be called as cataract which could be treated by a surgeon. There are few more pathologies which could be uh, seen and uh, we are going through it one by one. So now let us go with the first the histology of the cornea. The cornea, as I said, is a transparent ovascular. This term, ovascular, it means it is not supplied by any vessel. Then how it is going to get the blood supply? So obviously there should be some capillary surrounding them or to, uh, uh, the, uh, the fluid called as aqueous humor, which could be uh, present nearby that could be supplying providing a nutrition to it. So this cornea is covering the anterior one sixth of the outer fibrous coat of the eyeball. This cornea it is having five layers. So histologically we are going to see the cornea is having five layers. To remember this five layers, I have one mnemonic A B C D E. A is for anterior epithelium. So I will show you in this picture now the histology of cornea now this 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 is the five layers of the reti of this cornea this being the the first layer called as a corneal epithelium or the anterior corneal epithelium just for the mnemonic sake we are making this as anterior 
epithelium or anterior corneal epithelium. Next layer is Bowman's membrane, B. The Bowman's membrane is a homogeneous uh, substance which is present right here. So it is made up of a thin collagen fibrils which is present this. this. So this layer is the Bowman's membrane. Third layer is the larger layer. You can see this throughout, which is represented by S here. It's the stroma. We had said as C, it's the corneal stroma. Okay, so the corneal stroma is the third layer. Fourth layer is B, is a decimates membrane. Decimates membrane is again the homogeneous or acellular layer, which is present just before this endothelial layer. So this homogeneous layer next to the endothelial layer is the decimates membrane. And the last layer is the endothelium layer, which is the simple squamous epithelium. So to revise again, the cornea has a five layers, A, B, C, D, and E. A is the anterior corneal epithelium. B is the Bowman's membrane. C is the corneal stroma. D is decimates membrane. And E is the endothelium. Let us go through the details of all of these five layers. Corneal epithelium or the anterior corneal epithelium, which is the anterior-most layer, is uh, lined by a stratified squamous non-keratinized epithelium. <coughs> this is the magnified image of the an anterior epithelium or the corneal epithelium. You can see this is stratified in the nature and we say this being a stratified squamous non-keratinized. This is a, you can see the, uh, the superficial layer, they are flat on the squamous, while the basal layers, they are more your columnar. Now, these deeper cells having the oval nuclei, they are also called as a germinal layer. It means they give rise, uh, they, they divide and they replace the superficial cells. Right. So, suppose there is an injury to the cornea. So, will that corneal epithelium grow? or regenerate, yes, obviously. They rapidly divide and the cell turnover rate is around seven days. So whenever you get any patient with the corneal epithelium, generally we, we, uh, there is a, uh, a fungal or the bacterial infection which happens to the cornea, which erodes the epithelium, corneal epithelium. And you should be able to tell the patient that uh, with the treatment of that epithelium or by subsiding the infection, that epithelium may grow, uh, may regenerate later on. And its regeneration turnover is around seven days. The next layer is an intermediate or polyhedral layer. So you can see this middle layer is a polyhedral layer, while the superficial cells, they are flat. They may bear a microvilli, which help in retention of a tear and helps to prevent the cornea from dry, drying. Okay. Let us come to the next layer, which is called as the Bowman's. Next layer is B, Bowman's, A, B, right? So the Bowman's layer is also called as an anterior limiting layer. What I said regarding the Bowman's layer is, it is a dense homogeneous. See, this is a magnified image of the Bowman's layer. You can see here, which is represented by this arrow, is a Bowman's layer. It is a cellular membrane and it is homogeneous and it acts as a spread barrier to the spread of the infection. So suppose in case if the infection spread through this and it erodes the Bowman's membrane, suppose. So will it regenerate? No, so keep this in the mind. This layer do not regenerate. In fact, this if there is an injury to this layer, this layer may heal and it leaves some scar which may hamper the visib visibility of the patient. So any infection to the cornea which has affected the Bowman's layer, which has gone through the anterior epithelium and has affected the Bowman's layer, may lead into the scar formation and, and create the problem in the vision. Uh, you should be aware of this layer that the Bowman's layer cannot regenerate. Okay, and it heals by the formation of scar. The next layer comes the substantia propria, also called as a corneal stroma. 
Now this layer is made up of bundle of collagen fibers, which are arranged in a regular manner so that the cornea appears uh, transparent. So the regular arrangement of the fibers makes it to appear transparent. Few fibroblast cells are also visible in this substantia propria. And let me tell you, this substantia propria occupies the larger area of the cornea. After this, the fourth layer is the posterior limiting membrane or the decimates membrane. Now this magnified image shows the decimates membrane. You can see here, the one which is represented with the arrow is the decimates membrane. So as this spelling, you can note down the decimates membrane. This is a thin homogeneous or cellular layer after this comes the endothelium cells. Now, as this is the one on which the endothelium rests, so this is also regarded as basement membrane. And it can regenerate after the injury. Okay. The last layer is the endothelial layer. It is nothing but the simple squamous cells or loquidal cells. They provide a metabolic exchange between cornea and the aqueous humor. Now, to summarize, the cornea has the five layers, anterior epithelium A, or the corneal epithelium B is the Bowman's membrane, C is the uh, corneal stroma, D is the decimates membrane, and E is the endothelia. So there are three cellular and the two which is totally uh, collagenous fibers. Two layers are collagenous fibers. Okay. That's all regarding the cornea. The applied concern with this cornea I spoke was the corneal injury. Corneal injury are very common and, uh, 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 and it may be a bacterial or uh, the fungal and it may damage the anterior epithelium which can regenerate and the turnover rate of it is around seven days. Okay. Now I said uh, uh, the cornea is a vascular. So we should know the nutrition of the cornea, how it is going to get the blood supply. The so nutrition of the cornea is from the capillaries, which is present at the junction of conjunctiva and the cornea. So in between, there are few capillaries surrounding. So that area is called as a limbus. Now I will show you it in the picture. The limbus is present right here. So this is the cornea. And this is the remaining part of the eyeball. And this will be the surrounding conjunctiva. At this junction, this junction is called as a limbus where the blood uh, capillaries are present. And the, those provide the nutrition to the diffusion. Other form is through the aqueous humor in the anterior chamber. And the lacrimal secretion, which is spreading as a thin film on the surface of the cornea. So, uh, to tell you, to uh, make you remember uh, that this being a cornea and on, on its surface, the lacrimal secretion in the form of tears may spread, which provides the nutrition to the cornea. And on the inner surface, there is an aqueous humor through the diffusion will supply the uh, nutrition to the cornea, while at the junction, at uh, the cornea scleral junction, there are the capillaries which provide the nutrition. The factors which maintain the transparencies are obviously the regular arrangement of the collagen fibers in the stroma, what I said, and the absence of the blood vessels while, and the smoothness of the epithelium. Now let us come to the histology of retina. This picture, it represents the complete eyeball and here you can see this being the cornea and this being the posterior aspect. This is representing the sclera. The red colored strip you can see is a choroid and the innermost area on the posterior three four is the retina. Let me tell you about the retina is the nervous tissue. This retina has specialized area. So you can see some depression right here, which is called as a fovea. This is called as a specialized area because the retinal thickness is minimum here, while it has more number of cones. So it is the area of maximum visual acuity. 
this area is called as a fovea while there is one more area here where the nerve fibers they are continuing from inside from here to inside so this area is called as a blind spot so this area do not have any rods and the pores so it cannot visualize any uh, structures so that area is called as a blind spot to so understand this two specific areas one is the blind spot where the nerve fibers go also called as optic disc which produces as a disc like area so it is called as a optic disc while this area is called as a fovea now i said retina is the uh, nervous tissue let me tell you this retina in the section i have one picture to show uh, which represents the schematic diagram of the retina uh, it has 10 layers now you may be thinking how to memorize all the 10 layers it's very easy for this to know you need to know the function of the retina the retina is a, a area where the light energy uh, is converted into the potential and it is Uh, carried to the central nervous system so you are able to visualize the light right correct right. so for this you should know the direction of the light and the direction of the signals passing okay so let me tell you about now this is the section of the eyeball and this being the area of the vitreous body and this is the part of the retina here you can see and this is a choroid and this is a sclera and these are the nerve fibers which are projecting so in this you can see that the area of the nerve fiber where the nerve fibers are going is the area of the blind spot okay and this area which is there is a depression is called as a fovea centralis okay now this is a magnified image of the small area at which could be represented here so this this red colored area is the choroid while the remaining area is the retina now i want to know that the light when it reaches the eye it comes from this side and it goes inside so this picture it shows in this the blue arrow it shows the direction of the light how it passes so light it comes from inside from inside and this is the way how the signals are carried so i will clarify you this uh, so obviously when the light is going from inside out we are calling the any layers here called as inner layer and this being the outer layer so i will call the layers over here is called as inner and this being the outer correct okay so uh, coming back to the layers of the retina there are 10 layers so this layer being the pigment layer pigment cell layers the next layer comes the layers of rods and cones you are aware that rods and the cones are the one which are called as photoreceptors which receives the light signals and converts it into the potential energy so they are the photoreceptors which are present next to the pigment cell layers the nucleus of this photoreceptors are present here as they are outermost so they are called as a outer nuclear layer this nucleus forms a plexus with the nucleus which is present later on so this layer is called as a outer plexiform layer as they form plexus or the synapse synapses between axons and the dendrons dendrites so this layer is called as a outer plexiform layer next layer comes again the nucleus and but this nucleus is the one which gives communication to the rods and the cones which is on the outer aspect and uh, the nucleus which is present later that's the bipolar cells so this oh sorry the ganglion cells so this nucleus having the two poles so they are called as bipolar cells so the bipolar cells that present in this area they are called as a inner nuclear layer so i repeat again pigment cell layer layers of rods and cones outer nuclear layer outer plexiform layer inner nuclear layer after inner nuclear layer is inner plexiform layer 
which is again a plexus between inner nucleus and the ganglion cell layer. So this is the ganglion cell layer. And finally, the ganglion cell layer gives the nerve fibers, which is carried through, which forms a bundle and is carried through as a optic nerve. So here you can see the nerve fibers which are carried through and carried forward as the optic nerve. Now, how to memorize this all layers? So see that, see the concept behind this. We know that light passes from in this direction. The light reaches this area. This is the pigment cell layer where the melanin pigments are present. So they are stimulated by the light and they absorb the light. They, do, they prevent the light from the refractions. So they absorb the maximum number of light and they stimulate the rods and the cones here, which are next to them. So now, the, once the light reaches here, the signals start passing from here, so in this reverse directions, and it's carried by the optic nerve further. So the optic nerves are nothing but the axons of ganglion cell. Okay, and the rods and cones are nothing but the photoreceptors. Okay, so they have the nucleus here, and these are the one called as intermediary nucleus. So they are one which communicates the ganglion cell with the photoreceptors, correct? So wherever they are getting communications, they produces synapses. So this region, inner synapses, sorry, the, this we call as the outer synapses. So this is called as an outer plexiform, while this we call as inner plexiform. So that's easy, I think. Now, you can memorize now, this being a pigment cell, layer of rods and cones, outer layer of nucleus, outer plexiform, inner nuclear, inner plexiform, ganglion cell layer, nerve fibers, nerve fibers, yes. So this becomes the eighth number. Now what are the two other layers? Two other layers are the limiting membranes. Those are produced by the molar cells. I'll show you later on. So those limiting membrane are the one which limits, okay. so. It limits the rods and the cones from the pigment cell here. So this projection will be projecting towards this, but there is one limitation present next to the nucleus here. This will be the outer limiting membrane and the inner will be right here. So if you consider all this together in a sequence, they form a 10 layer. I will come back to you again when I will be speaking it histologically. Now let us come to the histological sections one by one. All these layers one by one. So let us first come to the pigment epithelium. Now this is the histological section of the retina and here you can see this is the vascular layer. So obviously this is choroid and here you can see the fibrous layer. So that's obviously being the sclera. So next to this here you can see from here starts the pigment layer. You can see the melanin pigments which have been occupied. So the pigment cell layer is a cuboidal cell which has a melanin granules. The function of this is it absorbs the light and it provides the nutrition through the diffusion and phagocytes the worn out cells. The next layer comes the layer of rods and cones. You can see the cone like structures and the rods like structures right here. Now let me tell you, the rods and the cones, they have three parts. One of the part is called as the outer segment. The next part is called as a body and the lowermost part is called as a inner segment. So the outer segment is present here in this area, rods and cones. The body will be having nucleus, while inner segment will be having synapses here. Okay, so the part of rods and cones, the outer segment, outer segmental part of rods and cones which we projected here. Next layer is external limb. You can see the line here. It's the external limiting membrane. What I said, it is the junctional complexes between apices of molar cells and photoreceptors. These are photoreceptors and there are few molar cells. Molar cells are like uh, glial cells which are present 
throughout. So they are present from right from here to here, around around its length. Okay, and the ex that extent it it uh, it is considered as a one which supports the epithelium. So the, the entire epithelium is supported by the molar uh, molar cells. So this molar cells has an extent from this level to this level. So this level is called as a external limiting membrane, while this level is called as an internal limiting membrane. Are you getting this? If I repeat again now, the first layer is the pigment cell layer, which is a single layer of cuboidal cells, and it has a melanin granules within them. So light first stimulate this area, and obviously it is the outermost area. So do not get confused with inside and out. The out is towards the uh, choroid, right? The in is towards the vitreous body. So light is coming from the vitreous body towards the uh, pigment cell layer. So it is the first which gets stimulated. And then the signal comes in the reverse manner. So once it gets stimulated, the signal comes via these rods and cones. Then is this is the limiting membrane. The next layer comes the outer nuclear layer. So this outer nuclear layer is obviously the nucleus of rods and cones, which is formed by the body of rods and cones. After that comes outer plexiform layer. So here you can see the synapses between axons of rods and cones and dendrites of the nucleus, which is present in inner nuclear layer. So what are the nucleus which are present in inner nuclear layer? Majority are by the bipolar cells. I said you before, bipolar have the two poles. One is the dendrite and other is exon. So dendrite of this will connect with the rods and cones. Exons will connect to the, the lower places. That's a ganglion cell. Now, obviously, so here, the bipolar cells, many bipolar cells, and there are a few other cells called as amacrine cells, horizontal cells, and molar cells. The horizontal cells are inhibitory cells. They are present horizontal directions. And amacrine cells, they uh, barely have the axons. But the molar cells, what I said about the molar cells, they are like the glide. They have the extension throughout these layers and they limit. They form the ex anterior, uh, sorry, external and the internal limiting membrane. They limit. So they will be present throughout from the external to the internal limiting membrane. But the nucleus is present in this layer. So they are called as, uh, which are called as inner nuclear layer. Okay. After this comes the inner plexiform, again, the synapses between the dendrite of ganglion cell and axons of bipolar cells. After that comes the layer of uh, uh, this ganglion cell layers. So here you can see the ganglion cell layers. The axons of these ganglion cell layers will form the nerve fibers and uh, which contribute in the formation of optic nerve, which will be carried back again. So this is how the signals are carried from outside in and then back again through the optic nerve. Last layer is inner limiting membrane which forms the end feet of the molar cells. Okay. Now let us discuss again the cells of the retina. One of the major cell is the photoreceptors. That's the rods and the cones. They're called as rods and the cones because of their appearance. I said to you that this photoreceptors, they have the three segments. The outer segment, which is represented here, which looks rod-like and conical. So is their name and the body and the inner segment, which is called as ferrule and pedicle. It's ferrule for the rods and cones and pedicle for the cones. This photoreceptors, they have a pigment. So rods have the pigment called as rhodopsin while the cone has been called as iodopsins. The rods respond to a poor light, while the cones respond to a bright light. Rods are totally absent in the region of fovea centralis, 
while the cones they are denser in that region which is having the maximum visual acuity is about the rods and the cones there are few other cells which i discussed now in this schematic diagram you can see these are the pigment cell and these are the rods and these are the cones next to the rods and cones was the inner nuclear right so this inner nuclear layer they had the bipolar cells which communicate the ganglion with the rods and cones so they are having bipolar cell you can see they have the projections connecting rods with the ganglion cells here, right here while there are few inhibitory cells now here you can see these are neurons inhibitory cells they are the horizontal cells which are running horizontally there are few cell other cells called the amacrine cells which are present in inner nuclear layers and they lack the typical axons uh, let me make it clear that the direction of a light from the lens is from here which reaches to this and the signal comes from this again via back again through this optic nerve it goes to the back here to the optic nerve next layer is I'm sorry. Next cells are the ganglion cells. The ganglion cells are the one which is situated right here. The nerve axons of it will form the optic nerve fibers. So where they live out, now they form a blind spot called as optic disc. Okay. The last major cell is the molar cells. You can see this projections produced by the molar cells. This violet colored structure. and you can see the nucleus which is located here and its extension so it extends right from here to here and they form a limiting membrane as i said this is external and this is a internal limiting membrane which is produced by the molar cells their function is supportive in nature okay that's all regarding the retina the next histological structure we have to see is the optic nerve so now you are aware of this light which is passing from here reaches the retina up to this area where there is a pigment cell and the signals are carried back to the optic nerve and it goes through this into the central nervous system now the optic nerve obviously this section when you see you will see the uh, nerve fibers which are gathered which is surrounded by three meninges and this nerve fibers they will be having cells inside so those are the retinal vessels so this is called as central artery of retina and central vein of the retina so in this section of the optic nerve it looks like this you can see the bundle of the nerve fibers which are gathered together and surrounded by this fibrous structure called as a dura and this cob web like structure called as a arachnoid matter which is delicate while the pia matter is the delicate membrane made up of collagen and the elastic fibers okay uh, let us come to the histology of plates and the palpebri uh, also called as palpebri the eyelid is a skin for which protects the eye from the local injury if you take the section of the eyelid you will see it is composed of the following layer this is the inner layer and this is the outer layer how to make out you can see you are aware that eyelid is uh, covered from the exterior by the skin so wherever you see the hair follicles and the stratified squamous keratinized epithelium is the area of the skin So that is the outer area while the inner area is the stratified columnar epithelium of the conjunctiva inside while the substance is substance of it you will see there are few uh, muscles called as orbicularis oculi muscle it's a skeletal which could be seen orbicularis oculi which is present inside next to the skin is a subcutaneous tissue but it is devoid of a fat and there are few plates called as a tarsal plates which acts as a skeleton of the eye 
you are aware that when the ophthalmologist it comes and checks your eye, he try to revert your eyelid. So it is, and the eyelid stays in the reverted position. Yes, it's because of there is something hard or something skeleton-like which prevents it reflecting back to its normal position. Right. So that reverse reversion is happening because of this tarsal plate. So this tarsal plate is said to be a skeleton of the eyelid, skeleton of the eyelid. Okay, so it is nothing but a dense connective tissue and they have some glands through them. Okay, so the next, the innermost layer is the palpebral conjunctiva, which is the stratified columnar epithelium with goblet cells. So how will you represent the outer and the inner layer is obviously the skin which is present on the outer side while the conjunctiva which is present on the inner side and the substance this is formed by a muscle inside and there are the tarsal plate which is a peculiar feature of the eyelid. So identification of tarsal plate will, will make you recognize it in the eyelid. There are few glands which are important, mebomian glands. The mebomian glands, they are present and located in the uh, tarsal plates and they give a oily secretions. They prevent the evaporation of a tear fluid. They are present here in the tarsal plates. While the other glands called the ciliary glands of small, which is called the sweat glands. So they are present right here, you can see. The ciliary glands of small. While there are a few glands of this, there again a sebaceous gland which is associated with the follicle of eyelash. The infection of this follicles, uh, sorry, the infection of this uh, uh, gland, sebaceous gland near to the follicles will cause a star. The star is a separative infection which is happening at the margin of the eye. Star is a, one of the uh, pathological conditions. The eye. Okay, finally coming towards the applied aspect, the corneal transplant. The corneal opacity, as I said, generally uh, uh, due to the corneal injury, we are aware that if it affects the only the anterior epithelium, it regenerates. If it affects the other layer, they may lead into the scar formation and subsequently will lead into the opacity. And obviously, there will be the uh, defect in the vision. So, in that case, you need a transplant. So, how the corneal transplant is possible? From a, a cadaver, we can, uh, sorry, uh, through the uh, donation, eye donation, which we are, uh, which we generally hear uh, that people do the eye donation. So, through that, we can take the cornea and which could be implanted uh, in the patient. And let me tell you, as this cornea being the vascular, then the chances of it getting rejected is less. Because the antibody which is formed uh, against the uh, transplant cannot act on it as the blood supply is not there. So the corneal transplant rejection is very less. So it's a, uh, a one of the good alternative for the corneal opacity as a treatment part. So uh, next applied aspect is a retinal detachment. The retinal detachment is nothing but the separation of pigment epithelium from the rest of the layers of the retina. Now I, let me tell you why the pigment epithelium gets separated from the rest of the layers of the retina. It means nine plus one, the detachment generally happens. So there are 10 layers. So nine layers get separated from the one layer. The one layer is that pigment epithelium. It happens because you are aware with the histology that all these nine layers are held together by the molar cells. There is an external limiting and internal limiting membrane which hold it together. And this is the layer the, uh, where the rods and the cones are freely attached to the pigment cell layers, they are easily separated from there. And one more reason for this detachment as a nine plus one is it's in embryology. 
the embryologically if you are aware that it is formed from the optic disc optic cup sorry optic cup which is bilayered the cup is bilayered the inner layer will form the nine layers while the outer layer will form only one layer that's why the detachment is happening at 9 plus 1 layer this is a one of the important uh, question to be answered that retinal detachment happens in 9 plus 1 layer that's all thank you